and I'm going to be part of the group that doesn't complain. Here's the stats. Only four out of 100 people bother to complain. Uh, immediately exceed ex 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 there's 25 others. 91% uh, people stop doing business and tell nine other people, except for 13% who make it a personal crusade. <laughs> You've been there, huh? 51% uh, come back if the problem is solved. Only 51%. However, if you really impress people, you get 82 to 95% coming back, and they create five new customers. Now, uh, impressing people means two things. It means showing them you care and then exceeding their expectations about what you do about it. But research at Texas A&M has actually shown if you can only do one of the two things, show them you care or exceed their expectations of what you do about it, you actually get a higher rate of customer satisfaction if you show them you care and can't do anything than if you fix the problem and they think you didn't care. Of course, if you do both, you're in. But I wasn't going to even bother complaining until, here's the guarantee, I get this newsletter in the mail that says, we're a customer service dealership. We guarantee your satisfaction. If there's ever a problem, all you have to do is pick up the phone, dial so-and-so, Susie's your advocate, blah, 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 blah. So, I figure I'm up for a good seminar story. <laughs> I'll demand they pick up my car. I get on the phone before I have a chance to demand anything. <gasps> I can't believe we did that to you. Oh, no, we've really let you down. You haven't been inconvenienced enough. We're going to have somebody out there within the hour. We're going to pick up your car. We're going to take it back here. We're going to fix it. We're going to deliver it back to you. You're going to have a loaner car sent to you. You're going to keep the loaner car as long as it takes. No charge. Sure enough, within the hour, I hear the sound. I come outside. Did I send a guy? They sent me a SWAT team. <laughs> Big black Buick Electra just sitting there in my driveway. All of a sudden, the four doors swing open simultaneously, and guys start coming out of this car. Two guys in suits and ties for me, two guys in coveralls for my car. If either has tried anything, they had us covered. <laughs> This totally exceeded my expectations, first of all, in that first moment of truth. Oh, no, I can't believe it did that to you. What if she said, um, name? Do you have an invoice number? Do you see the fork in the road right there? And that not sometime today, within the hour, and they made good on their promise. And I don't know if they rehearsed this or what, but I'm telling you, the, the car was just parked. I heard a sound, and then I go out, and there's this black car, big black car. I think it's like a, it's a, a hit. And <laughs> when they saw me, then the doors came open simultaneously. And when they got out of the car, they didn't just get out of the car like people get out of cars. They came out like this, we're here, we're here. <laughs> the guys in suits and ties ran over to me, apologized. The guys in coveralls ran over to my car. People were running all over my driveway like a pit stop. And what really impressed me is they sent four people, because logistically speaking, two is all they needed to do the job. Do I feel cared about? The dealership got a level of loyalty for me. They literally could not have created had they done it right the first time. And therein lies a great irony of good service. You can create more loyal customers if you make mistakes and impress them than if you do it right the first time. I'm not suggesting this is strategy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but things are going to happen. We do want to recognize the opportunity that that is. And so first of all, anybody who complains should be thanked, because most people don't. So thank you for giving us the feedback. That also throws a monkey wrench in their response and keeps us off the defensive. Then we want to immediately exceed ex expectations and caring, and that's going to be 55%, 38%, 7 in what we express in that, in that moment of truth. And then, of course, we want to exceed expectations in what we do about it. But there's got to be a follow-up step, which is, all right, what can we learn from this? How can we prevent this from happening in the future? There's got to be an internal mechanism that we take this in and, and we learn from it. If we don't, then we ultimately will make the same mistake over and over again, and eventually we won't get away with impressing the customer. Which leads us to continuous uh, improvement. 